Hi, it's Andy Bauer here at Object Arts. I'm producing this video as a response to a query on the Dolphin News Group about if there are any other ways of developing applications uh, without using the Model View Presenter framework. Now, as you know, it's my belief that Model View Presenter is fairly straightforward once you get the, uh, the basic concepts and uh, I've done a number of videos on this in the past. Um, but in fact, the, the user interface framework in Dolphin is flexible enough that in fact you can use um, uh, the view hierarchy class um, as actually a widget type uh, GUI framework without having to get involved with models and presenters. So should you want to do that, um, you can follow along with this video and um, <clears throat> see how it's possible. Now, first of all, let's create our, before we go and do that, let's create ourselves a package uh, in which we can put this example. I'm going to create a simple little translation application. Uh, let's call it Days of the Week Translation. Okay, and we're going to stick all our um, uh, new classes in there. Okay, let's open the uh, class browser and let's browse to shell view okay as I say what you want to do is descend your main application class from here so let's uh, create ourselves a new subclass and we'll call it days of the week translation and uh, I'll put that inside our newly created package, which, as we know, was yeah. okay. Now the first thing we need to do is to create our subviews, um, the basically the widgets that are going to go inside our um, uh, our window. And we have to do that by overriding um, a method called onFullyCreated. And this is called when Windows has set up the basic underlying view and is ready for you to uh, add things to it. So if we override onFullyCreated and supersend that. Now I'm just going to show, just to start off with, I'm just going to show the creation of a simple list widget. So let's. Um, uh, let's add ourselves an instance variable where we can uh, hold on to that and we'll call that days of the week list okay and I'm going to create one of these by adding it as a subview to the current window And we're going to use a list box and because we're not using the beyond we're going to be able to use the view composer in this this way of working we have to actually explicitly set all the properties of any views that we create so in this particular case I'm going to set its uh, bounded boundary rectangle and let's make it And we can do at the same time we can populate this list with whatever we want to uh, put into it so let's add the days of the week in there Let's go and try this out and see what we've got. Um, we can do this from a workspace. If I open myself a new workspace, and we can just basically say days of the week translation show. And you see we have a rather large window, but it does have um, our populated list in it. Okay, so let's say we don't want the, uh, the window to be that large, so let's create ourselves a default extent method and let us 
make it 375 and 260. And in order to stop uh, the resizing border appearing, we can go in um, in here and we can, before we create our subviews, we can um, set some pop, um, some parameters on uh, our own top level view. And we can turn off the resizing border by setting has thick frame false. So if I now go back and um, evaluate this again, you see we've got a more interesting uh, size window and we have the different um, items in the list. Okay, so wh what we want to do now is to create a number of um, additional fields, populate our application, uh, and in order to save time typing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of um, uh, the code I've made before and I'll just run through it with you. So, inside this on fully created method, um, we can do things like we can set the caption of the, uh, the top level window. We can set its background color to a particular color. And we can do what we did before, which is to turn off the resizing border. Then we go ahead and populate it with subviews. Uh, we've already done the list view, but one interesting thing here is whenever we, if we want to intercept a, um, a change notification that the selection has changed in the list, um, then we can, uh, we can do that here. So basically we can say days of week when the selection has changed, send this particular message to ourselves and we'll write that code later. Um, and we populate the list. Um, and now let's also create ourselves a read-only text item which we can fill in with the um, current selection and that is the day of the week. Um, so we create a text edit view and we set its rectangle. We say it's read-only and because it's read-only we don't want a tab stop on it so we set is tab stop to false. Now these parameters are all things which would normally be set in the view composer if you're uh, building a standard MVP application but because we're not doing that we have to set these sort of things manually. Let's create another field um, called day name translated which is going to be the translated version of the day name and um, it's a text edit view and it has this particular rectangle and then we might want to put some labels on for these fields. So I've created two static text views uh, with labels. Um, and because static text views normally have a uh, particular uh, gray background associated with them, I've set the background color to nil to allow the um, background of our top level window to show through. And we also might want to um, have a push button which sends a command when we want to update the text. Um, in our database. So um, I'm adding a command push button, setting its rectangle, uh, giving it a command symbol, and also giving it a piece of text on the screen. So I just need to add in these two instance variables to receive the, um, uh, the view identities. So let's And so now we should be able to go back and compile our method. And if we now go and execute the show, you see we've got a nicely laid out and populated uh, application window. If I click on the uh, one of the items, you see we get um, a walk back saying, days of the week translation does not understand um, on day of week selected. So we can create that method, use the debugger to do that. Let's just shrink that up a bit. And we can implement that in here. And here we want to actually go and grab hold of what the 
current selected day is. First of all, I want to set the text of the day name in English field to be equal to the, um, the day name that we've actually selected. So let's assume we're going to write a method called uh, selected day. It's going to get the current selection from the list. And let's put the text version of that into our uh, read-only field. And um, let's see how that will work. OK, we need to define that method. And that simply is going to be the contents of the list and get the current selection. Let that run. OK, now you see as we select the days of the week, we get the day name in English placed here. Now we want to provide, be able to provide a translation for these day names, so uh, we need somewhere to store that. Let's um, add a dictionary. Uh, and we can put the translations in there. So I'm going to add a dictionary in here. And the best place to initialize that will be in an initialize method of our class. So um, let's close this existing window and add an initialize method, which will supersend. And we'll make our dictionary just be equal to a standard small talk dictionary. Okay, let's launch our application again. And now, when we select this, we want to be able to um, uh, have an update command which will actually take the name in here and add it to our, um, our dictionary. So let's write. Um, a method to match the command name that we put into this um, into this button, which if you see down the bottom was update translation. So we want to write an update translation method. Okay, and here we will say dictionary at uh, self selected day put the text out of our translated field. Okay, let's go and test that. So let's uh, put the French name in here and say update. And now that's not quite right because we're not updating that field. Okay, so what we need to do is to go back to the on day of week selected and make sure we also update this field to the one out of the dictionary. So we say display string of that in there. Okay. So now as we move about the window on the when we've updated names into there, you see that they are pulled back. And so that's an example of how you can create a fairly simple application, not using the MVP framework, but using the view side of it as effectively a widget GUI creator. I hope that's been helpful and uh, uh, I'll see you again soon.